Hey everybody, Prepper Nurse One here. Today is October 13th, Friday the 13th. Here's Mrs. Saxe. What? <laughs> so anyway, um, what baby girl? Today was, uh, now it's more overcast as you can see. It's also about six o'clock at night, so it's gonna be dark within an hour because that's what happens this time of year. But uh, we did get some sunshine in today on the solar panels. We ended up pulling in a grand total of 2.6 kilowatt hours today, which is more than we brought in the last two days combined. So I'm not, not unhappy with that. But anyway, yeah, it's just, so I wanted to do a video today and I wanted to talk about um, solar, is it worth it, okay? Is it worth the cost of solar? And uh, we're gonna talk about grid-tied systems, we're gonna talk about independent system. My, my system is an independent system, okay? So, the thing is with the power companies, we're gonna talk about this part of it first. With the power companies, they have a monopoly on, you know, the you know the solar or not solar I mean the uh, the grid so it's not like you have a whole lot of choices like if you live in North Carolina Duke Energy is one of the big ones down there okay you're pretty much you're getting your power from Duke Energy up here up here in uh, upstate New York there's two companies basically that you're gonna get your power from up in this area uh, you're gonna get it from um, well there's Niagara Mohawk is one that's more towards Buffalo if you live in the Buffalo area you're going to be buying your power from Niagara Mohawk, okay? Uh, in the Rochester area, you're going to be getting it from um, rg &E, Rochester Gas and Electric. If you live in the southern tier, you're going to get it from NYSEG. So those are pretty much the big three up in this area. Now, I don't know about New York City and all that because that's quite a ways away from where we are. So, but anyway, and those are like just a, an example of a couple. They have a monopoly, like... Rochester Gas and Electric in the Rochester area has over um, <clears throat> they have over 200,000 customers in that area. Okay, there's a lot of people that they service. Okay, there's not another choice. You can't say, yeah, well, you know what? I'm not happy with our genie. I want to go with somebody else. There is nobody else to go with. You're going to go with them. Okay. Well, because of the fact that they have that monopoly on those areas, the government regulates them. It says basically that they can only increase their rates about 8% a year, okay? So basically, that is what they're going to do. They're gonna increase their rates every year by 8%, and you you know, you know, have to pay more for your power. And if you don't like it, too bad. There's, no, there's not another option, okay? So, um, you know, basically what you're paying right now is the cheapest that you're ever gonna pay again for your gas and electric, you know, because it's just gonna go up every year. Now, the cost of solar, on the other hand, has continued to go down. The price of solar panels and stuff like that has continued to go down. Now, if you want to be grid-tied and tied into the system, you can be or you can do it independently. Now, if you live in the state of Florida, on the other hand, they have regulated it so badly that if you have a solar system that you have to be grid-tied, which I think is absolutely ridiculous, okay? Now, for my fellow people that are you know going with solar in Florida I would recommend that you definitely at some point get backup batteries that if you have another hurricane that comes through that if you had to you could switch over to your batteries to be able to power your homes because it is oppressively hot in Florida even in the winter it's hot in Florida so um, you know oh, one of the freaking neighbors dogs just went running by but anyway with that being said, yeah, there goes the other one. <laughs> just saw the first one, now the other one just went. With that being said, you have, um, like I said, why not have that backup battery? Now, they don't want you to have the backup batteries. They want you, like when that power went out in Florida, even the people that had solar panels did not have power. I think that's ludicrous. Uh, to be able to have that backup power to do the switchover, to cut off from the grid, to be able to put that power into your own batteries so that you can use it so that you can have power that's what you should do that's my opinion if I lived in Florida I will guarantee you if they said I had to be grid tied I'd be grid tied to one little building with a light bulb in it and uh, the rest of my property would be completely off grid I wouldn't even play that game and there's nothing they could do about that because you're, you're grid tied 
So, um, or you're still on the grid. But it's ridiculous, absolutely ridiculous. But you know, especially down there when they get so much sunshine. But I'm I'm going on a tangent about Florida, so I, I apologize. But anyway, cost of solar continues to get cheaper. The cost of your energy is going to continue to go up, up, and up. Now, here's the thing that I will say: if you decide you want to get solar and you plan on living at your place for at least the next 10 years or so, then yes, absolutely go with that. You know, do it. But if you don't plan on being there except for a short period of time, you know, if you can set up something that is movable that you can take with you, then that's still an option. But, you know, it's like you're not going to recoup your cost if you're at a place like three years and then boom, you're gone on to something else and you've invested a whole lot of money into solar. You're not going to get that cost back, okay? Is it an attractive feature for the right clientele? Of course it would be. But, you know, realistically, you know, like I said, it's, uh, you know, if you can pack it up and take it with you, great. If you can't, you know, no. Um, now, like with my system, and I've talked about this before, I got about $14,000 so far into my solar system. And I've said this a million times, and I'm going to repeat myself. I need more solar panels. Okay, that's where I'm at right now, especially this time of year, like today. Um, we pulled in 2.6 kilowatt hours. It was a partly cloudy day, but we, we did fairly decently. And I'm not going to complain about pulling in that, especially after the last couple days. On a rainy day, you're not going to hardly pull in squat. I mean, it's just, it's just the way it is. And you better hope you have enough juice back in your batteries. It's going to last you so that you can get by. Um, that's why having a backup generator, generator is key. But, uh, you know, the ultimate goal with anybody that's going to be doing this, they want to have enough solar panels that they don't have to worry about it. I have a neighbor that lives on the other side of the valley from me. He has, and, I, and I've mentioned this in videos before, he has 56 250 watt solar panels. Uh, you know, so he said, don't matter what time of year it is, he's got more than enough power. And uh, the power company cuts him a check once a year, and he gets a check from them once a year. So, you know, um, but he still has to pay fees every month, which like connection fees and all that other nonsense and taxes and everything else. But uh, what are you going to do about that? There's nothing you can do. But anyway, overall, long term, if you were planning on being at your place for any number of years, 10 years or at least 10, you're going to recoup your cost. And then it's all gravy after that. And there is a resale value in your system. Uh, depending on how old it is and stuff like that. I mean, solar panels will continue to produce power for 30 years. So you're still going to get production on your panels no matter what. So if you decide you want to move or whatever, you know, you're still going to get your, you know, your return that way. Um, it's an attractive thing for somebody if you say, hey, well, listen, your gas and electric bill is going to be here because of your solar panels. You know, that's going to make people really look at that a lot more. Uh, I, me being off grid, I, I would never be grid tied. I have no desire to be grid tied. I don't want to be grid tied. I want to be as independent as I possibly can. And uh, we have been since we moved down here. And uh, yes, I do use a backup generator for days that I don't have enough power. But you know what? That's part of it. And um, you know, like I said, the ultimate goal is is to build my system up enough where I don't have to worry about that. And uh, that's what I'm driving towards. And we will get there. I mean, if I had double what I have now, and I pulled, like I said, I pulled in 2.6 today. If I had 5,000 watt system right now, then say we would have pulled in, you know, 5.4. So I would have had more than enough power for the day. So that's the way you look at it, you know. And uh, but the thing is, it is definitely, in my opinion, definitely worth the investment. Um, I definitely want to get your guys' feedback on this and ha hear what you have to say, what your thoughts are. There's Buddy waiting to go in the house over there. You know, to, to hear what your thoughts are. Do you think solar's worth it or not worth it? Uh, you know, if like I said, I, I think a lot of it comes down to, again, it's want and need. If you want it or, you you know, how much power do you want? How much power do you need? Oh, there goes Miss Soxie as well. Um, it comes down to want and need, guys. You know, they say the average household uses 30 kilowatt hours a day. An off-grid family on average uses 10. We're getting by, uh, the best day I had this year, we pulled in 7.6 kilowatt hours. I am in the woods, so I don't have a clear, unobstructed thing of, view of the sun all day long to get it maximum that I could possibly get, okay? But that's okay. But, you know, the thing is, if I pull in 3.5 to 4 kilowatt hours, 
I am more, that's more than enough for us, okay? That's way less than the average person uses, so that's, that's something to think about too. But anyway, I definitely want your feedback on this topic. Let me know what you think. For me, it's definitely worth it. Uh, we plan on being here for a long time. I, you know, I've thought about moving at one point, but I'm not going anywhere. Um, I love this property. I love where we're at. Um, I'm not a big fan of winter, but you know, we deal with it. So anyway, let me know what you think. Remember guys, hug and kiss the ones you love. Tell them every day, tomorrow is not guaranteed. We never know what's gonna happen. And remember STD, it's real important. It's one step at a time, one thing at a time, and one day at a time. Whatever you're driving for, whatever you're trying to do, whatever you're trying to reach, your goals, you can do it. And the only one that's gonna stop you from obtaining those goals is you, okay? Negative people, hateful people, don't, don't feed into that negativity. They're unhappy, miserable people, and they want you to be miserable and unhappy as well. They don't want you to be happy. But I'll tell you what, life is way too short to be unhappy. It really truly is, and I believe happiness is a choice, and we can all obtain it, okay? So listen, I'm gonna jump off of here. I will talk to you all tomorrow, um, and have a good day. Prepper Nurse went off for now.